needs to be on the hiring process. What did we do with her to help her get ready? What could we have done better? And I want, from Matt's viewpoint, why did he decide to give her a chance? How did the interviewing process go? All of these people are people from the seven different colleges that are part of the DOL group. Chelsea, <laughs> what went well for you? How, what did we do? Tell them about what we did. Obviously, I had to work on was my resume. This and came to me, and, and I actually came here. This is actually where I met Matt. Was we and were in a, a that was actually the CTC meeting. CTC. We have to have a national visiting committee meeting every year for the uh, NSF grant for the CTC and I actually had a, three different students that we brought out as an example of our work for the National Visiting Committee and Matt sits on the National Visiting Committee and I actually took him aside and I said you need to watch this one you know, in a couple of years you might be interested in hiring her. Well a couple of years turned into a couple of months but anyway that's another story. Um, so it was after that meeting that Anne came to me and said hey Matt was really interested, and um, and he there is a job opening available, and he'd like to see your resume. So that was kind of a, the kickstart. So I got a resume ready. We sat down with career coaches, and that was extremely helpful. So the next step. Wait, wait. wait. So let's stop here. Okay. What did you say when you saw the resume? The resume and the, uh, the project portfolio that got her in the door because. She wouldn't see me until after she got through HR and she got through uh, the, the first level of leadership and then the second level of leadership. So I didn't spend a lot of time on her resume uh, because it had already gone through three whole gates before getting to me. And when it comes to my uh, interviews, it's more about team fit uh, and integrity and honor. And I'll, I'll kind of elaborate a little bit more on that because I'm very particular about who I put on my team. The three students that you put in front of me, Chelsea being one of them, it was about their attitude. It, everything was about how they, they transform. And in every interview, the three interviews that happened before it got to me, they were all talking about, when I, when I said, so how did the interview with Chelsea go? It was always about her attitude. Oh my gosh, she, she just, She's amazing, she's energetic, fun to be around. Um, what, what a great addition to the team. You have to have the aptitude in order for you to get the job, but if your attitude sucks, you can't hold it, right? Okay, did we do any mock interviews with you? Yes, we did. Anne is very honest. When we were sitting down, and a lot of times I have nervous habits that I don't really notice myself, and I sit in this mini chair, I, I do this, I just have a tendency uh, to just do this. Uh, <laughs> just one of those. And I don't even notice it, and I'll just be sitting there. And Anne was like, stop. She's like, you're like hypnotizing. Like, yeah. quit moving. <laughs> you know? And so then I'm like, okay, you know, and then I'm kind of like tapping my hands. She's like, Chelsea, like, stop being nervous. Like, it's just us. And this is how you have to walk into the interview is you're just talking to people. You know, sit down and talk to them like you would talk to someone. You know, just be professional about it. One of the best things was like wording. Um, because there would be certain key questions that are like directed towards communication. There are others that are directed towards the skill set. There, you know. So depending on the question that they're asking, make sure that you you respond you respond properly. You don't want to talk about leadership if they're asking about your communication skills. When you're when you're talking to people, make sure you understand what they're asking, and you can ask them to clarify. That was that was another thing that I liked was. This was my first career interview, and it was, and you know, walking in there, I was, I was extremely nervous because I've never done anything like this before. So prepping for it was huge because it's so helpful being able to clarify what's going to be said in the interview, how you should act in the interview, how you should dress in an interview. Oh, talk about that. <laughs> I went out and I got my nails done because I'm. I'm really bad about biting my nails, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So, and, and dress-wise, you know, I had my black dress, my black dress pants on and, um, you know, a nice shirt. I just bought the shirt because I want something new, I want something nice. And like hair one color, hair down, that was another thing, because I always wear my hair up in a ponytail, but wearing it down, it looks nicer, it looks, you know, professional. professional. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay.
So I have a question. What about those other interviews before you got to this stuff? My other, my other interviews were actually with the uh, the other managers that we have. So there were three. There's Lee, Allen, and Elmer. Elmer is my boss. He's actually the networking guy, and he was the one I presented my portfolio to and talked to about that. So I had done a um, capstone project in my CCM3 class. We had to create our own network and put it together, OSPF, and just different different elements. Um, and I had to present that to him and, and demonstrate how I had done some netting and um, the routing protocols I put in place and, and why I, I did the things that I did in this particular network. So <coughs> the portfolio was extremely helpful because um, I was able to show them what I had done and, and what I knew. So Lee asked me a lot of questions about how experienced I was in Word, Excel, projects. But you also need to know how to document. That was, that was a big... And more importantly, you have to present it to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is, that's a really big one. <laughs> like Matt said, I mean, you have to be able to present it in front of them and say, this is what this is, this is the game plan, and this is how it's going to affect the business. But, but it's, not, it's not about the communication to me, it's about how IT people in general um, have been lobotomized in their ability to communicate with business people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and what's what I what I'm taking extra coaching with Chelsea and, and quite frankly several of the other team members yes. on your team <laughs> yeah. is the fact that they don't understand how to communicate except through other propeller heads. So if they got a little bit <laughs> of that, spin that propeller and they they get together and they're ch -ch 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 -ch. nobody else understands what you're talking about. <laughs> but everything, everything what's really interesting and fascinating about the whole concept is that. Everything that is being <coughs> talked about at the lower technical level is very applicable at the business level, and they're just not translated. So a lot of the time and effort that I'm spending now at Chelsea, being new to the company, is getting her to realize, wow, everything is about data. At any level of communication, as, re as deep as you go technologically speaking, it has a very relevant feel for that business person who's consuming the data. Because that was one of the things that we didn't really talk about in our system classes was business compared to our IT department, you know. So learning the business aspect of what we're doing has been incredible. It's, it's an eye opener in a sense. Well, you know, we're not focused on our our section. We're focused on the company. You know, it's, it's not just us, it's, it's everybody. So. so what could we have done to better prepare you? There were two big things. Number one, portfolio. I think we should start having our portfolios really early, like you know, first classes, because that had I known, I would have been able to build up a lot more of my labs that I had done over time. Another thing is uh, apply to real life, in a sense, um, kind of like the business aspect of it. Make sure that people know when you're when you're doing this. It's not because there are people like me who've never worked in the industry before. They're not just working on the IT portion, I'm also working on the business side of things, and we just don't realize it. Regardless of the preparation levels, any college or institution can provide a student, it, it is always going to come back to how are you um, building up the, that person's character? How are you building up that person's courage? It, it took a lot of courage uh, for Chelsea to come and interview for a position that um, she wasn't really qualified for. And I had 50 applications for her position. Wow, I didn't know And I had HR <laughs> chomping at the bit to get some of these other people uh, that were going for her role. And some of these people they were sharing had master's degrees in project management. But what I wanted was somebody to get me a millennial. Give me somebody who can come in and give a fresh perspective. Give me somebody who can breathe life into the, the world around us. Let's give Chelsea a shot. The, the idea here is I want to showcase how Collins organization, their training, their capabilities, that it wasn't just the interview. Every day that Chelsea has been with us, and I'm not exaggerating, I have people coming up to me going, man, I really like this girl. She's got a great attitude.
She's hungry, she's excited about the technology, she's, she's excited, and also she's committed to getting her degree. And quite <coughs> frankly, I want her to get her uh, bachelor's degree, so it's not gonna stop here. You guys are empowering these students around you, empowering them with the wisdom of technology that they can apply to a business model. Did you have a uh, relationship with Ann or Colin that predisposed you to looking for community college applicants? Yes. Ann sent me a letter, I want to say three years ago. It's probably been about three years. She well, sent, yeah, she it sent was me before a letter, I came back. She sent me a letter uh, saying, hey, I'd really like to get business um, a business industry kind of leader in to help us with our curriculum. So I thought, you know, I'm going to give this a try. So as soon as I, I got to the first session together, I thought, wow, you know, I think, I think this is this is really going to transform the way we do business in the world around us. Uh, if if we if we business people can get in front of uh, curriculum developers and transform the way they think, because m most of my college education I don't use but when I saw what Ann was putting together and she this was actually bringing people so I don't have to go into the OJT thing right we're getting workforce ready people coming right into the industry this is really incredible so that was one thing then in, in my company we don't hire associates degree people you look at every one of the um, job descriptions it's all bachelors or equivalent uh, 25,000 years worth of experience. <laughs> all, all, all of this stuff, and it's just, one of the first things I did was stop doing that, start looking for associates. So one of the things we transformed is where, with all of those HR folks, where it was a position that clearly could, an associates person could do, open it up. So now it's associates are better. So that was a, that was a transformation, quite frankly, of what Ann's work did in my life, personally. But I think the, the most important thing from my perspective is that I get a student. I find out every day from Elmer, her boss, on uh, things she doesn't know and things she does know. That, to me, is a great mechanism. Take that information out of her and be able to feed that back into the curriculum development, saying, hey, these are some, some misses that we have along the way. As having been in the industry, and having been myself on the side of trying to advise programs, I got really sick and tired of getting in on the back side of the programs that the colleges were putting together and going, this really isn't kind of what I want or what we need or what we want to hire. And it was too late to change it and flip that around. And also the bit of it's a personal relationship to get people engaged from there. The team itself kind of self-motivates, but getting people engaged is a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I thank both of you. I'm the luckiest person alive to, to mentor you and to get to work with you. So thank you very, very much.